Hey everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the For the Future podcast. I am so excited to finally be back and be able to share some incredible new content with you guys that I know you'll love. Today we speak to Alan van der Meulen, he is the founder of Slaughter, a social entrepreneurship venture which aims to help young people gain work experience and ultimately curb youth unemployment in Africa. He speaks about his experience growing up in Mitchell's Plain and what inspired him to start Slaughter. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so thank you so much, Alan, again, for taking the time to, to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to find out firstly, um, if you could just explain to the audience who you are and what is your story. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm from the area on the Cape Flats called Mitchell's Plain. And I mean, it's one of those areas that's known for like gangs and guns and violence. But I promise I haven't stabbed anyone recently. I mean, I've been too busy, you know, trying to, trying to make hope contagious and, and bring about good in the community. And so being from an area like Mitchell's Plain, there's a lot of like unemployment, there's a lot of like hopelessness, and there's a lot of young people that just don't feel that they can pursue certain opportunities for whatever reason. And then being, so we looked at like, what are the factors, you know, preventing like these young people from finding employment? And they always say, they don't have experience, they don't have money, they don't have anything to, to find works. So I grew up in this community um, where it's like, yo, our people are so talented, man. They're so skilled, but it's like, why can't we do something? Like, why can't they do more? And I mean, just just my mom and my dad were always one of those people that's like, oh, let's, you can do it, man. You, there's no such thing as peer pressure. It's your choice. Mm. Oh, you can actually, you don't have to like say no, or you don't have to say yes, you can say no, or you don't have to just do this. You can pursue something else. So I was lucky enough to have like, you know, those kind of parents. I mean, we have our own set of circumstances and and I'm always trying not to tell like a sad story about like poverty, et cetera. But it's more like, you know, we, we've been through some stuff, man. Um, but but literally it's like growing up in that environment where even though we don't have, the guy in the corner has even less. And yeah. at least on my side, I'm like, yo, I can do something. I'm thinking about it. But for that gentleman, it's like, oh, this is my life. So I grew up in, in that kind of environment. Yeah. Um, so what do you think have been some of your um the biggest challenges that you faced both in your life and in uh, Zlotto? Hmm. Oh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, in my life, definitely, there was, so my, my parents were always good at hiding our circumstances from us. So you just, you just see like one day, oh, there's a car, next day, there's no car, you know, so it's like, oh, something must have happened in that time, and you sort of piece things together. But it's like growing up with those kind of challenges where it's like, there's certain choices that are made for us. So it's like, oh no, suddenly we, we can't live, we can't live in this house now. We have to move into this windy house. You know what I mean? So it's like those for me were, were, were things where it's like, this is actually something that's outside or out of my control. Um, so then those were always like big challenges. We we moved around a lot growing up. So we lived in a lot of different areas. We we even now where we're staying. We used to live next door and we were always renting and there was a few families there and now it's like oh you can't just do certain things because there's people on the property all those kind of stuff you don't really have like freedom etc and then yeah so that was that was like a challenge in itself and then even just being from a from an area where like i wasn't a dreamer and those people who know me like i was someone who had potential but it's like yeah, i'm not worried about this education thing or this career thing even like matriculating i'm like i'm not thinking about like studying at all i didn't even apply nothing because I'm like, yeah, that's not, I'll see what happens, man. I'll see what happens. In fact, I'm going to just become a rapper. You know, I'll just maybe write some verses and make it big kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess it's more like mental challenges and those kind of stuff. But then working on, on Slato specifically, the, the challenges were different because now I'm suddenly in an entrepreneurship space, but no one is speaking about entrepreneurship where I'm from. You know, no one is like, yo, I have a business or this is how, you know, this is, this is what it means to run a business. So, I mean, my family, you know, they basically, my dad, I mean, my dad's worked at the same company for like 20 years. You know, my mom, they, they, they yeah, they just sort of settled, man. It's like, yeah. it's like, yo, this is, this is where we're at. We're going to work for this boss. Boss going to tell us what to do and et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm trying to tell them, you know, I'm going to do like the social entrepreneurship thing. Man. And not just that, I'm going to need some time. And I'm not sure this thing will work out. Because I mean, you know, being from the area, like you matriculate, hey, you're supposed to go work, hey, to bring some money in because we're struggling. And I think that was the hardest part. I mean, because the way I joined, I joined this organization called Art Labs and they had this youth cafe in that space. And the youth cafe was a place where you can just, you come and do a lot of short courses and you learn things like social innovation and entrepreneurship and all the stuff that I'm involved in now. But it's like, literally, I remember before I got an internship at Art Labs, 
I like needed money. I was like, yo, we did it. there's no money in my house. You know what I mean? I'm like, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do this course. I'm gonna do this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do this course for like the next year. And I remember, I and I got in the interview. So a lot of people don't know, but so I landed this job. I think it was at the library. I remember, and it was just like you know, I'm gonna pet books. And I went for this interview, and I did so well. And the interview was like, yo, are you sure? Are you sure this job is for you? Because your personality doesn't seem like. You know, this is a very quiet space. And I'm like, yeah, no, this thing is for me because, I, I mean, I need the money. He's like, oh, I don't think this thing is for you. Don't you want to, like, take some time to think about it? And I remember, I remember going home and I'm like, yo, mom, I don't think I can do this library thing because I asked him, so, but at least I'll speak to people. He's like, no, you won't talk to anyone. I'm like, but I can read the books to the kids. He's like, no, there'll be no reading. You're just, like, going to pet with books. And I was like, yo. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I can see why you would say that. I Maybe this one is not for you, man. <laughs> Yeah, this is like, this, I don't think this is for you. <laughs> and I go home and I'm like, because I call my mom by a, by a name. I'm like, yo, Pat, um, I don't think, I don't think this thing is for me, man. No way. <laughs> and my mom's like, look, and they're very supportive. That's what I'm saying. I was lucky because my mom and my dad are like, and if you don't think it's for you, then like, don't do it. We'll figure something out, man. Mm. And I mean, literally, not even, you know, almost like um, the, way, the way God would have it the next week. You know, we I get the internship at like Odd Labs. Now I'm like at the youth cafe and all those kind of stuff. So it's very much like um, getting involved with that journey. Yeah. You know, I, I forgot the original question. I'm speaking so much. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Like, it's okay. Um, I know what I'm explaining now. So, no, yeah. listen. The, the the more you have to say, the better. So don't worry about it at all. Um, okay. but we can move on sort of oh, a little bit. Oh, I just want to touch more on 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 Zlotto. Uh, could you kind of explain a little bit more about like what Slotto is and what what you guys are trying to do? Yeah, so so as I mentioned, like being from this community with a lot of unemployment, we looked at like actually what are the factors preventing people from finding work, and yeah. it's either they don't have you know work experience, sometimes they don't have skills, but often they don't have the money to find work. I mean, and people don't realize it's more expensive than you think to actively look for a job. Because if you think about it, um, you have to get dressed for an interview. You want to go to the hairdresser or the bob, or you want to like look good, or you want to. I need a shirt for the interview, and I mean, I got like the only shirt I have is like from church, you know, and that's like a bit worn out. So now I'm trying to go look for a job. I'm trying to make a good impression, um, but sometimes a simple thing like just having formal clothing, our, our people don't have, or just that, being able to have data on your phone to Google the location of the place when you get there, you know, we just don't have that. And I mean, sometimes that's very difficult. So Zlato rewards people for number one, gaining experience. And the aim is like, you maybe you have skills, you just matriculated, or you're someone that knows how to use Microsoft Excel. Literally go volunteer at um, a local business in your community, you know, go do the admin, and then you, you're gaining our ex experience. And people can't do that because, I mean, why are you doing that? If you're from the communities we're from, you're not bringing any money home. So your parents don't understand this volunteering thing. So you're going to work there. You're going to get up every day. You're going to go volunteer, but you're going to come home with nothing. Thank no, you. I get the real job. Do, do you know, it's like yeah. that, that kind of pressure. So it's like um, you're getting experience and you're also learning skills. So you're learning the skill of administration if you're doing that. But you're also learning communication because you would have, have to speak to the person. Um, you're also learning time management because you have to be there at a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, so now Slato basically rewards you for getting the experience and gaining the skills. And we reward you with this incentive point system with, which we call slato which you can then exchange for things that can reduce your cost of living or finding work so then with your slato you can buy things like airtime electricity um you can buy like food um you can buy like shirts all, all those kind of things that i mentioned so now and the beauty of that is where before your, your parents would be like yo why are you at this program you, you're there for like 12 months you're not working why are you all time volunteering you're not working suddenly because you're supposed to put like they would say bread on the table mm -hmm. now it's like okay yeah. I'm going to go volunteer. I'm, I'm going to buy my food voucher. I'm bringing home the bread. It's on the table. So I'm going to get back to work. Done. Uh, off your, off your case. Exactly. You know, because, because unfortunately we can't, um, like I'm from the Cape Flatsman. So it's like, we don't have time to wait 12 months before we're going to find work. It's like, there's no food today. So I get it. I get it, mom. We, <laughs> you can't, you can't afford, literally people can't afford for you to find work. We take the time to find work. I mean, if you, because we ran the numbers last time we checked, it was something like between 1,300 and 1,500 rand a month to actively look for a job. So yeah. just picture that, picture that conversation. Yeah. Like, I'm going to like, come on, mom, I need like, I need 1,500 rand a month and I may or may not have a job. Yeah. I mean, the stupid, 
cheaper to be unemployed. You know, we make you some tea, you sit at home, you watch TV, then it's it's better. So that's the kind of things that people are dealing with. Man. I mean, you can have the best educational program in the world, in my view, and you still can't do it because you don't have any, yeah, you, you just don't have money to stay. You can't run the cost, the yeah. opportunity cost of you staying in this program. Yeah. So that's what doctors trying to do. And also at the same time, being from these communities, they, they gave us this nice term, this are previously disadvantaged communities. You know, if you're going to be politically correct, you know, like, like we say, you know, if you're from the scheme, you sort of have to prove that you, <laughs> that you are a bit different, man, that, you, that you work hard. There's a lot more that you must prove. So now, um, Ms. Lato, they ask you, why must we hire you? And people always say the generic things, well, I'm hardworking, you know, I'm confident, I believe in your company, all these kind of things. Now it's like, no, man, that's not going to... Every hundred people say this. Every hundred say the same thing. This guy's like, well, I met 200 confident people today. Okay, when am I going to meet someone that doesn't have confidence and I can still work with it? I just want to meet some honest people. Yeah. How many <laughs> team players can you have? Exactly, exactly. So everyone is... Yes. Everyone loves working on team. Everyone's... My... my my biggest weakness is that I have no weaknesses. Everyone has no weaknesses. No, I'm so, too so hard. Working is, is the best. I, one. <laughs> I just work too hard, man. I, want to, I don't know where to call it quits. Yeah, so so for me, it's like now it's Lato at least you go, well, here is um, here's my work asset or my or my impact CV. So mm. the reason should I me is because I've demonstrated 500 hours worth of communication time. Where, yeah. I've, where I've used the skill of communication. I've got like 200 hours where I use the skill of, of administration. So it's lot of tracking all the stuff. And remember the way Zlato works because we're using like a bit of, of blockchain technology to verify it. We basically allow strangers to verify your, your earn activities or your, your, your earn activities. Mm -hmm. And what that literally means is we're now going to, um, so now you, you know with LinkedIn, basically all your friends say, Oh no, I believe that this Ellen guy has the skill and we all just endorse, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. now with Zlato, you basically got strangers endorsing you. So now it's like you you have to demonstrate this skill so effectively that 10 strangers from different parts of the country all look at the same activity and go, Well, this person, you know, they know administration. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's hard to do. Yeah. I mean, just convincing like just convincing like your friend that if he gives you a 10 right now, you're gonna give them a 10 right tomorrow. They're like, I don't know. Grow up next year the whole time. I don't know if you're really gonna pay me back. Yeah. So, so that, so for me, that being able to write to the point where strangers can vouch for you, man, that's different. Mm. Wow, that is that's really profound, man. I think that a lot of the times when, um, you know, we talk about problems like unemployment, and you watch the news, and it's like, hey, hey unemployment is this percent. We don't think about like the all the different kind of issues and stuff that lead to unemployment that simple things like the fact that you need data to access um you know things like job searching websites the fact that you need decent clothes to even be able to to show up and, yeah. and you know be proud of yourself and be able to yeah. um go to interviews and stuff i think that's stuff that we we, we don't think about and consider and i yeah. think what zlato is doing is actually really cool yeah. and i mean literally like i'm not even joking like i had a friend i mean this guy like we were at the youth cafe together. We did all this stuff together. Mm. And I mean, this guy's like, you basically missed like a, a guaranteed job. Man. So we like, how do they say? Like we hooked him up. You just had to show up to the interview. Yeah. You know, you just all I did was be there. And he's like, no, nah, I didn't go. And I'm like, yo, what do you mean you didn't go? He's like, nah, Ellen, I didn't have a shirt. And I was like, oh. bro, like, like imagine, bro, I didn't have one shirt. I can give it to you, man. I, you can borrow my shirt. He's like, no, but I didn't want to ask you because you already did this thing. And I'm in his mind now. Like, you know, the, the fact that if someone already got you a job, now it's like to ask them for a shirt or transportation to the interview, or the, the pride takes a knock, man. Yeah. And it's like, so, and, that, and that's like just a, not even an isolated incident. There's just a lot of people that don't want to say, well, I actually don't have money for the bus. So that's why I didn't go. Because I mean, oh, like, you know, we're all struggling, but I mean, as long as my struggles are private, we're still okay. But mm -hmm. like the, the public struggles, you know, people are going to receive because you're basically gambling. Someone could go, well, actually, yeah, I could spot you. Or they could be like, oh, look at this guy. This guy don't have anything. And they start to make fun of you. Um, especially when you're young, man. I believe, like, sometimes when you're young, we, we think we're joking. But, but not yeah. everyone feels that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. Um, so, you know, a lot of the time when I have um, people on, on the podcast, I kind of ask them, 
like questions about um just advice that they have for 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 people mm. and especially for young people um but i was reading your mail and guardian the the that article and you actually mentioned that a lot of the times you 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 can receive all the advice in the world but if, mm. if you're not in the right place for that advice and yeah. you're not in a place where you can experience it and have sort of that eureka moment where like something yeah. actually advice clicks then it yeah. might not be beneficial to you you know um so my question for you is what what are the kind of um eureka moments that you've had that that you've mm. thought have been the most profound where you were really like wow I, I, th that that really made a difference yeah well i mean this is like the the thing that probably started you know my career that literally launched it because if you met Ellen from like 2013, you know, after high school, I'm like not thinking about the future. I'm not caring about the people. I'm not doing this at all. Yeah. Very different person, you know. So, so then I was at the youth cafe, and I mean, the facilitator just said something, probably the the most simple and most profound statement I ever heard. You said, "You said, I can only speak of what I know. I cannot tell of what I don't." And I was like, "Yo, that makes absolute sense." If I don't have knowledge in certain, in something, I can't contribute. So if I want to contribute to society, I need to learn more. So you know what I need to do? I just need to learn everything. And that, and that became my mission. I did like every single course that I could find that all I was offering. I jumped in incubation programs, accelerators. And I was like, yo, this, this makes a lot of sense. My people, my people are left behind. And it's not like, you know, there's a political agenda. It's just because we just don't know. Mm. I just don't know how to register my business. So therefore, I can't access funding for registered businesses. I just don't know what BE actually means. So therefore, I'm not benefiting from the system. You know, so it's like, so I can only speak of what I know. I cannot tell of what I don't. Super simple, but like, I was like, yo, flip. That works. I need to be on that. Then, then I think another time was when I, I was doing, um, I think it was like a machine learning course or some programming course that I was doing. And I was like, well, this, I think that I started to realize that you could, I learned about like, and I mean, for all the developers, I'm like really bad at what I'm going to say now. This is just apologize if I'm butchering the coding language. But I mean, I, I literally, I literally learned that you got all these loops and while loops and if statements and all those yeah. kind of stuff. And it's like, if this happens and that must happen. And if this happens after seven times and do that, then I'll start to think, actually the game, the game is not like super rigged, man. There's some stuff that you can do. So, so certain actions happen based on certain outcomes, man. So I can't like expect, Yo, we're gonna be successful if the out if if the outcome was not met. So I'm like sitting at my house complaining, oh no one's giving me opportunity, but I'm not like doing anything. I'm not waking up, I'm not reading, I'm not involved in society, I'm not talking to users, I'm not doing that stuff, man. So for me to achieve a certain, you know, action, there's a certain criteria that must be met. And I was like, yo, this makes absolute sense in life. We sit in there going, and I always I always tell people like um, you you say, oh, there's no jobs, for example, but let's say the government decides. You know, we're going to make available 10,000 jobs tomorrow, but all of them are encoding. Can you get that job, man? Yeah. We're like 10,000 jobs that none of us can get. So mm -hmm. the issue is not that there's no jobs. It's, it's sometimes like you yourself are not skilled. So there's a criteria that must be met for you to get a certain outcome. I want to be employed. Am I actually employable? Or do I just wake up and go, yo, everybody's getting this job. And it's like, oh, everybody, my friends are now getting, but like, what skills do they have? And people are like, no, but I have my trick. And I'm like, yo, come on. Because it's a, and then this is another statement I started to realize when I did a lot of these courses that sometimes people just set criteria so they have to interview less people. It's like, well, we got 10,000 applications. You know what? Okay, you must have matric. Mm. Bam. We got like 5,000 applications. Applicants. And I was like, oh, actually, you must know computers. Bam. Now we only got 2,000. In addition to that, you must have one year experience. Now the list is like 500. And you must have a driver's license. Now we got like 10 people that we need to interview. Mm. You know, so now they're like, we just we just shortlisted everything and i think that's like when i started to realize that well actually you you're putting yourself to a disadvantage by thinking whatever you're doing is enough you need to do more it's not just about oh i did the trick or i studied or whatever there's people with degrees that can't find work yeah. they don't have like experience or, or vice versa so it's like what are you going to do to make yourself so different that you know you they just they almost can't say no. So, mm -hmm. so I developed this attitude that, I mean, this is before I started like pushing entrepreneurship and stuff. I was just doing courses and I'm like, my aim, no one must touch my CV when I leave here. No one, they, I must leave this place and go, oh yeah, I got project management, I got events management, I got like app development, all this kind of different stuff. So when someone looks at my CV, they're going to be like, oh, like, I don't think we can afford you. You know, that must be your aim, your mindset. Yeah. You, go, you know, and it's like, and then another thing I realized that um, 
people always say that they don't have skills and they don't have opportunities, but you got so much time. Like for me, it's like if you're unemployed, no, that's the greatest advantage you have. And it's it's not like something that you know it's counterintuitive, but it's like you got so much free time. I mean, how long does it take someone to read a book? Let's say a book takes like five hours to read, you know, end to end or eight hours. I mean, it takes me a month to read a book. Mm. I don't know, but but like spaced out, you know, you can knock off like pages an hour or, or whatever it is yeah. like 300 pages you know you could you could get that done in a day because you don't have anything else to do you got so much time and you got time to volunteer you got time to read you got time to learn you got time to do online courses and it's like we sometimes we mm-hmm. cut young people a lot of slack you know because like oh shame i feel sorry for them oh now nah, it's like their first job oh no there's this circumstance oh there's their background and i'm like no man especially if you're from my area mm-hmm. you're not gonna live like down the road from me and say Oh, you know, Ellen, I've been through so much. I'm like, no, man, let's tell me your sad story. I'll tick all that same boxes. But but you but you can must not decide. So for me, it was like, if you have time, what are you doing with your time? Don't tell me, oh, you don't have time to read a book and you finish like a, you brag into me, you finish the season of like, I don't know, the Kardashians. I don't know what's popular now. I'm not into that. But anyway, but you're telling me, I just, yeah, I was binge watching the series on Netflix. And I'm like, you're not serious about finding work. Then another, another last eureka moment, I realized like if you're not, there could be a million opportunities. Again, if you're not ready for it, and I always tell people, people that are unemployed, they say that they're wanting to find work. And I'm like, but what do you do? Do you get out of bed and get dressed? And I'm like, no, they sleep for like 11 o'clock, walk around in the counts the whole day. And it's literally like, you say you want to find work. What if, what if I phone you now at eight o'clock? And I'm like, yo, there's an interview now. Your response to me is, yo, give me some time. I must still get out of bed. You know, I must still go wash quickly. I must get this. You're not ready for an opportunity. And I, and I keep saying that, no? And there's, I'm not even going to lie. A few times that's happened where I'm like, wow. we're literally the, the homies like, they're looking for this man. They're like, you have an interview now at 11. And the guy's like, oh, you're, you can't find it. He's still getting pissed. He's going to make his way. And I'm like, you say to us, you're looking for opportunity. Mm. We hook this thing up. You look, and the worst is sometimes you live like, you live close by me. You live like in the area. You live like one taxi away. But now you still must get dressed. You must still find your clothes. You must still brush your teeth. All that stuff. So get up in the morning, man. Even if you have nowhere to go, get up and just get dressed because then you're ready. And it's not even the one time. Even someone I know, they, they you know, they have a business and they were expecting clients and they were like, oh, no one, I didn't, didn't see any bookings for the day. And I'm like, no, but just get dressed, be ready. And I kid you not, the client shows up. And then it's like, oh, this person is not ready. This person is still like in bed. But it's like, we can we can smooth talk the situation and the clients can understand but it's like if you were just awake and fully dressed man you could have sort that whole situation out people can walk in you don't have to like rush through the space you can just be like i'm a bit late but i'm on my way now you're still a bit late you must get dressed you must wash you must be you must pretend to not be asleep so for me it's like be ready for an opportunity man when i was like yo i'm not i'm not ready sorry if i'm taking a bit too much time i'll say i'll say one more thing on this but also a eureka moment for me is I was, I was once at an event because I'm starting to like have to do like pitches and stuff and like tell people about Zlato. And so the reason I started the intro with look, I'm from Mitchell's Plain is because I get there and people look at me, they go, yo, there's a colored guy. They assume like my area. There's a lot of like prejudices that come with that. They assume, you know, so I start off with saying, yeah, I'm from this area, but I don't stare at people. And then it's like, oh, so now there's like a joke and people are like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, this guy. So, I, so I'm like, <laughs> I embrace but, you, but you, you, certain people, you can see, they're like, they're not sure if they must laugh, man. They're not sure. It's like, oh, this guy's saying that. But yeah. also, I don't know where we stand. He's joking. He's like, it's okay to laugh. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, start, I, I start out with the stereotype. I'm like, yo, this is where I'm from. This is where, this is how it is. So you get, let's get that out of the way. Yeah, I'm a colored guy from Mitchell's play. So this is your stereotype. But now I address it. Then I proceed to just speak the way I speak. Mm. Um, and, and I know sometimes people do like this whole code switching thing. And I mean, so the way I'm speaking to you is very different to when I'm like speaking to my funders because then it's like, there's no slang, but it's like, sometimes you must, sometimes you're going to have to switch up depending on where you are. And I, and I sometimes learn that I can say things like, yo, in the scheme, we do this. But if I'm talking to a funder, they don't know what the scheme is. They don't you know that, that that's not, <laughs> so I need to like yeah. switch up. And yeah. sometimes I'm like, I had to learn that, that certain people you can speak because they understand and people you speak comfortable Mm. feel comfortable to you speak a certain way and sometimes you get out people that goes no this is just who i am everywhere you know they, it's just me all the time and it's like don't like i mean if they for like a to land the sale you, you're telling me you can't like leave out slang i don't have to like say my bro in every sentence 
you know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to land a deal, can't you just say sir instead of bro today, man? Like, is that like really hard to do? So sometimes you're gonna have to, you have to be authentic, but also know when to toe the line, man. Because yeah, you just, you just, it's just like a, a balance that you have to do. But when you speak to your people, then speak to your people, man. Because sometimes, sometimes we so we so lost in like and and we experience even in our team sometimes. You are so far removed from the problem that you forget what you're solving, man. Mm. Now this is like the office is like in town, you know, in the in the main spot, and you're like, oh, my people, we, I'm trying to help them, but you're not, you're no longer in the community. So I, I keep telling my team the biggest advantage that we have is we actually it is a plain. So go to the same malls you've been shopping at, you know, go to do the same stuff you've been doing because you must actually you know speak to the same people. Now your your circle changes your everything changed and then now you in the same you might as well not be from the area man. so like if you if you're from the cast you be from the cast if you're from the scheme be from the scheme you just switch it up when we're talking to the funders but like understand that this is what we're about man. so for me it's like the minute you you lose track of that then things start to go down mm. again the original question i think was eureka moments but i mean let's see let's no see don't no don't worry at all it was a, a brilliant answer um yeah no i really loved it um and then lastly um i have a question that i I like to ask every every guest on the podcast and that is that if you knew that every young person um not just in south africa but on the african continent was listening to this podcast episode right now um what would you want to say to them be authentic, man. Like your experiences, even like your 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 poverty, you know, your skills, all those things are part of who you are, man. So we try to overcome it like too quickly. But like we the people that are gonna change, we got the largest working force, man. So I mean that means we should be creating the most opportunity. So we don't also have to just look at like what the Westerners are doing and just adopt that, man. Like what do we create us as Africans? And, and that man, like the world, like I think we passed it. We should we should move to it. it's like okay we're following the West and now it's like yo this is what we're gonna do now we're gonna try to fit that in like what can we as our people do so for me it's like find your own problems because the Western world don't have the same problems that we have you know you, you, and I see this by some of the businesses people are trying to solve uh, you know we oh, we need to have a cleaning company because there's no one to there's no one that can clean after me but us as Africa we got we understand our issues the best and we need to solve it so for me it's just understand what your problem is in your local context because i can't i can't assume that my issues are the same like the issues in zambia so you both for your country for your context for your community like your town whatever and then if enough people are building then we have you know something that we need to that we can do at the at the global scale that we, we can actually then compete but also like it's at the same time while we're building our local context let's remove all this division man so like, I mean, because it's hard even for Africans to just get on the same page sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes even it's like just working with, with other people. So I understand if I'm from South Africa, that doesn't matter, man. We're trying to solve the same problem. So whoever, whoever like links, if it's, it's our people, man. You know, it's our people. Like why is it, why is it easier for like um, these American institutions and all these kind of people to, to find us or to travel to us? Like why are we not just, yo, let me just, let me jump. Let me jump to Nigeria. Let me see what's happening. Let me, let me see how can I collaborate. Yo, I'm trying to start a business. I'm trying to sit up there. Yo, yeah. Ellen, can what can you do? You know, and then my reply must be, look, I, I don't have much connections, but I'm sure there's someone in my nature that I can speak to. So yeah. us as Africans, we need to collaborate more. Number one, grow our local context, solve their problems, and then collaborate more cross borders. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and whoever's listening, look, if you want to collaborate, let's, let's bring Zlato to your country, man. Let's have that conversation. Yeah. Let's see what we must do. Yeah. No, I absolutely love that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much again for, for, for taking the time to be here. Thank you for sharing your, um, your experience and, and, and your wisdom. I think it's definitely going to help uh, a lot of people. Uh, it's been really interesting uh, and really cool what you guys are doing, what what Slot is doing, and um, yeah, yeah. Wish you all the best, and uh, yeah, thanks again. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that it brought you tremendous value. If it did, please leave a rating for the podcast on whatever platform you use. 
like share comment subscribe and follow us on social media at for the future za i would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast episode thank you so much and have a good one